Hi, this is Shiva Rajaya from VitalCoaching.com. We are talking about vital sex and tantric sex and the topic for this video is what is the difference between uh, dysfunctional and shadow sex. So um, we are again starting to explore a little bit these shadow areas, the areas which are a little bit murky in the, the sexual energy. The reason why I'm doing that is really because we need, to, we need to explore that. These are different aspects of human consciousness, human behaviors, human activity associated with sex that we need to check and understand how they work. So for me, um, again, this is my opinion. It doesn't need to be universal, but maybe it might give you some hints and some frames that you can start using for yourself. So for me, it becomes dysfunctional when there is no awareness about what's going on. For instance, a pattern that may, uh, might be dysfunctional is if, uh, for instance, you as a guy, you become extremely angry, you become emotionally abusive or physically abusive with somebody, that's a dysfunctional pattern and it's a shadow as well that is not brought to the surface. Uh, on the other hand, if you get angry, imagine that you get angry within a context where your partner is accepting consciously accepting to be fully present when you are having a crisis of anger or a crisis of frustration and she's there. Yeah, I understand how you're feeling. You are angry. And I would be angry too if I was in your position, you know, like a bit of a motivational coach there sitting right next to you. That's not necessarily dysfunctional. That's just the expression of an emotion that comes out. And that is actually, it's very healthy to get it out. And it's very healthy to have a supportive partner who allows you to go into states of crisis without freaking out. So when the shadow comes out, you know, when there is a shadow, for instance, a shadow of anger coming out, then, uh, you know, is it, is it an emotion that you really own? You are conscious of what's happening or is it an emotion that is totally dominating you and making you do things that you might regret later? Are you abusing people with that shadow or are you creating something, a vehicle that becomes empowering for you and for the people that you love? You know, for instance, being a little bit aggressive when it comes to business is something that is, is a positive quality. You want to conquer new markets. It's okay to do that because it's it's a certain quality that is going to allow you to, to survive and that you will, you will use within the context of your life in positive ways. So you totally own it and you play with that energy from a conscious perspective. But there are lots of shadows that are out there, lots of dysfunctional behaviors, you know, self-destructive behaviors like drinking or smoking, being out, totally out of balance in, in destructive patterns that are going to annihilate your body destroy your health and destroy your relationships. So that would be dysfunctional because it leads, it's not sustainable on the long term and it's not a behavior that you really own and understand. So the idea, you know, a shadow can be uh, clarified or it can be a shadow you're aware of and you're playing with that energy or it can be a shadow that is totally out there, totally dominating your life and uh, leading you into a pattern that is self-destructive for yourself or for your couple or for your relationship. So it is good to understand a little bit this, uh, you know, this distinction. One of the principles that um, I personally work a lot with uh, when it comes to tantric energy and especially when uh, when it comes to, to tantric sex as well, because it's one of the, the aspect of my vital tantra system, it is really the idea that we are not creating a separation between the lights and the shadows. Of course, I mean, in a way, we know that certain things are more in the direction of good things and some other things are more in the direction of bad things, but we are not labeling good or bad. We are simply, I'm simply saying lights and shadows. And in the shadows, there is lots of juice. There is lots of energy. For instance, um, a certain frustration can be the, the engine, the fire to force you to take action that might totally change your life. So the frustration itself that you might feel at one given moment, you know, might be actually a very positive force uplifting in, in your life. There are lots of shadows out there that are very often qualified as being a bad thing, when in fact they are just a positive force that you can totally transmute and use in positive ways. For instance, let's take another example, the idea of uh, jealousy, right? For most people, jealousy, when they feel jealousy, they say, oh, I should not be feeling jealous. You go like, what? It's, it's a set of weapons that was given to you by nature, and uh, sometimes using these weapons in effective and positive ways might save your couple and your relationship. 
you know, you are a woman and you are married to this guy and you have three children together. You've been married for, for 10 years, you know, using your jealousy weapons at a given time might save your marriage. It's possible. So you need to be really smart in the way you use those, those shadows. How would that save your marriage? Well, imagine that you know that there is this woman who is attracted to your partner and you just go to her. One day you have this conversation that comes out of jealousy, right? It's a positive jealousy response. You go to her and you say, look, I know that you are attracted to my husband, but he's mine. I just want you to stay away from him. Okay. Are we clear? We are sisters. I want you to honor our marriage. and I don't want you to become a threat in our relationship. I know that you understand exactly what, what I'm saying. We have three children together. Do you want to be the one who is going to destroy that marriage? So here we go. You just went out and by expressing and voicing that to a total stranger, this woman might be like, oh my God, thank you for saying that. I realize that, yes, I'm a threat and I don't want to be a threat for your marriage. I want to honor that. Yes, we are sisters and um, I'm not, I'm going to pull back. I'm not going to call your, your husband again. And uh, sorry that I did that. You know, so the fact that you project a little bit of emotional or energetic threat on that woman might actually protect the couple, which is a positive use of your jealousy response. You are allowed by nature to use that response that uh, jealousy response in that moment because you do it from a place of awareness you know what you're doing it's not an emotion that is dominating you you take your weapon and you use your sword and you target it and you use it in ways that are constructive to protect your family this might save your marriage so is it good or bad of course it's good it's a quality or a force that was given to you so if we were covering you know the the vast spectrum of hundreds of human shadows that are out there, you will notice that you can give a positive spin to almost, almost any shadows that are present in, uh, in, uh, in your life. And it's good to understand this. This is another topic, you know, right now we are talking about vital sex because, uh, because that's the first, you know, that's, that's the area we are focusing on, but there is another area which is called vital shadow. So we will be covering uh, these ideas of positive shadows, dysfunctional behaviors, are you dominated by the shadow or is it something that is serving you and how to master your, your shadows. It's a whole new range of, of possibilities. But of course, you know, when you're tapping into sexual energy, then lots of, lots of things can come up, you know, uncontrolled emotions, feelings, you know, vulnerabilities, traumas, um, memories of abuses and, and so on. So we getting an understanding about how shadows work, how shadows, sexual shadows work in your life is uh, one of the key aspects to be really successful as a human being and be able to master your life. Another, you know, another thing to understand it is that if you don't know if something is right or wrong, check about whether it's legal or not. Okay. If something is illegal, most of the times this law has been established to protect somehow society. It's not universal. There are certain laws which are really stupid that have no reason to still be there. But um, if you, um, yeah, if you check on, on that, then you will notice that, for instance, rape is illegal it's a crime don't go around um, raping someone because because that's bad so it's a dysfunctional pattern it's not just a shadow it's a dysfunctional human behavior that we need to kick out of human consciousness it's no longer okay um, and uh, you know other forms of sexual or physical abuse of course it's it's within the realm of what's what's illegal as well so check if you're not sure you know if you're in a place where you're trying to justify a certain behavior check is it legal or not and if it's not legal um, that might be a good hint for you to not engage into into that behavior okay that's it for now enjoy